Today, I wanted to take a broader view at one very popular Empire War mod, Fall of the Republic. As I start to understand more about Empire War, the more I play it, I'd like to revisit and recover some mods I've done in the past, and hopefully do a better job at it with my newfound knowledge. Fall of the Republic takes us back to the Clone Wars, with the CIS and Galactic Republic as playable factions, as well as other non-playable separatist factions, such as the Trade Federation, Techno Union, Banking Clan, and more. Today, we'll be running through the ships that the mod has to offer. For stats, possible tactics you can use for each ship in both Galactic Conquest and Skirmish modes, and pitting two fleets against one another. Eckhart's Ladder and Cory Losers are currently doing a joint command series of this mod, however, on the hardest difficulty. You can check out that series in the info card in the top right. But before we get into that, I wanted to put out my question of the day, which is, what is your favorite part about the Clone Wars? It could be about a particular game, the films, TV series, characters, or more. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I read all of them and try to get back to some of you too. So the first faction we're going to jump into is the Galactic Republic and starting off with our single fighter of the selection of ships that we have with the ARC-170 uh, and it's a predecessor to the X-Wing series as you can see with the classic X-Wing design there uh, measuring in at 12.171 meters in length and it shares similar traits to the X-Wing's uh, proton torpedo launchers and S foils where you can see that those wings uh, coming out in an angle can close in and out from the center much like the X-Wing can do when they close in their two wings to increase their speed and shield regeneration so here we have a full squadron uh, about 12 of them and you can also tell this by the uh, the dash it has in the icon so one thing I think some people do forget is that the dash here is actually quite a new addition which actually tells you how many squadrons are in that single selection so one dash equals to a one squadron which is 12 fighters two dashes is two squadrons 24 fighters three dashes is three squadrons 36 uh, fighters and then if there's anything less than 12 you'll see a dot uh, indicated instead of a dash so moving on to what would be our first corvette sized ship excuse me Corellian corvette which is otherwise known as the CR-90. Uh, whilst the Corvette was known to be used within the late Galactic Republic, it was more commonly used with the Rebel Alliance. And some of these ships might actually also be refitted versions of the CR-70 version, instead of being completely new builds. And this is a very popular ship seen in the films as well. But uh, in this mod, we take on a very distinct red tone across the entirety of the Corvette design itself. So moving on to the Arkansas Light Cruiser, a very popular ship that uh, is used frequently in the mod. It's voiced by our good friend Shaq, uh, but it's also known as the Jedi Light Cruiser. And it was still used beyond the Clone Wars in limited service for the Galactic Empire. And some were refitted to become Arkansas Command Cruisers. Now, I really like this model of this ship. It's very highly detailed, including the underside of the ship here. The, uh, the stripes of red that go all around the ship really gives it a unique design. And I've seen versions of this in Thrawn's Revenge without this red uh, lining across the ship. And I think it makes such a great difference to just really make it stand out. I really have to admit, I am a, I'm a big fan of like the, the, the red outlines across all of these themes of the Galactic Republic ships. And the Arkansans is a great example of that. And our next ship is a cruiser, the LAC Republic Light Cruiser. And it is voiced by me, myself. And it was first appeared in the final issue of the Jedi Council Acts of War. And then flashback in the Stark Hyperspace War series. It has five medium dual turbo lasers, which makes it a really effective anti-fighter in fleets. As for this model, I gotta say, it looks just as good as uh, all the others we've seen. I just love, like, even though it's a small compact design, there's enough detail here, especially with the textures, just to look absolutely fantastic. And unlike the Arkansans, this one's completely red with uh, grey outlines instead, and I think it's a really nice touch, because it does follow the Corvette uh, design where it's all red uh, as well, but just like the amount of detail in these textures for such a small ship really goes a long way if you ask me. Going up in size is the Acclimator Heavy Cruiser. 
It is measuring in at 752 meters in length and was actually a predecessor to the Star Destroyer line. The Empire eventually used so many acclimators as slave ships transporting enslaved people to various imperial colonies. But other than that, the Empire never actually used the acclimator in its fleets post-Clone Wars, but it did use them in planetary defenses or skirmishes. Now again, the designs of the acclimator here look absolutely supreme. And uh, again, with the red outlines striped across the, uh, the sides of the hull and the red strip in the center really makes it stand out. And I like how it's a very common occurrence in even bigger ships. But here we have the first time it is using the red stripe design across the hull. Next up is another heavy cruiser, which is the Dreadnought Heavy Cruiser, coming in at 600 meters in length and is very prominent in the Thrawn trilogy. A powerful mid-sized capital ship dating back to the early reign of the Galactic Republic. The clam-like design of the ship is to allow multiple weapon configurations as it follows a very standardized layout. Up next is the first Star Destroyer of our selection, not missing out on the Victory 1 and 2 of course, but the Venator Star Destroyer, otherwise known as the Republic Attack Cruiser. Standing in at 1,137 meters long, it is possibly the most popular ship of the Clone Wars, especially being the backbone of the Republic Navy due to being so versatile in ship-to-ship -ship combat and impressive carrier loadout. The Venator had so many carrier loadouts, they ended up having two bridges as you can see in the center, one to manage the starfighters and one to manage the ship itself. Now with a ship like this you can absolutely see that it's following the classic wedge star destroyer design with some liberties of course and uh, again the textures here are even more sublime especially for a medium sized ship like this. You can see the turbo lasers in the side here that match up the hard points of the ship itself. And if we zoom in even more, we can actually see the hangar bay, which would open up to allow a full strip of fighters to come out of the Star Destroyer, uh, which is also located in a hard point on the fighter bay here itself. Coming into our first Dreadnought, which is the Invincible Dreadnought, a cylindrical shaped 2011 meter long warship. Saw some use in the Galactic Republic, but then a surplus of ships post Clone Wars was sent to the CSA and used as picket ships. The design allowed the vessel to be generally cheap to acquire and very simple to operate with minimal crew members. So I think with the Invincible Dreadnought, it's one of many Clone Wars ships that uh, took a very different approach to how a ship would actually look like. We're so used to the wedge design that the Imperials use in uh, post Clone Wars, but thing ships like the Invincible or the subjugator tend to have very different designs that you would see post Clone Wars. Coming up next is an even bigger line of Star Destroyers, which is the Secutor Star Destroyer. Here I'm going to have to start manually managing the camera as uh, using the controlled camera zooms out a little bit too much. But uh, the Secutor Star Destroyer is also known to be a battle carrier rather than a Star Destroyer. Standing in at 2,022 meters long, it was actually a Fanon ship and which was sewn in the background of a comic, Dark Empire II, Devastator of Worlds. Whilst the vessel was unnamed for a period of time, it adopted the name Secutor as the Latin description for a gladiator armed with sword and shield, most likely referring to the fighters and defensive capabilities alongside a carrier ship like this. Whilst the design is directly in line with the Star Destroy and Wedge theme, it originally based on the flying wing design which is commonly used in real world stealth bombers. And finally, our biggest ship to show off for the Galactic Republic in this video is the Praetor Battlecruiser, introduced in the final years of the Galactic Republic and coming in at a huge 4,000 meters in length. However, these numbers are an estimation and not to be confused with the sizes seen in the Praetor 2. And the Praetor 2 itself can go up to double the size of this one. The Praetor class was a successor of the Procurator class Star Battlecruiser line. However, it still suffered the same issues with the Hyperdrive line as its predecessor. Now, I really love the design of the ship. There's a lot going on across the hull here, especially in the center back and um, the engines itself. Very large engines here and uh, a lot of hard points dotted around where all the turbo lasers uh, would be placed and again this has immense firepower compared to any of the other ships that we've just shown uh, today definitely decked out with 20 heavy quad turbo lasers eight medium dual turbo lasers five dual iron cannons eight medium dual iron cannons and a whole lot more so yeah definitely definitely one of the more powerful ships you can use 
in a fall of the republic especially being i think the strongest ship you can use in skirmish although i can't guarantee that for uh, galactic conquest game modes so next up we have the confederacy faction and unfortunately i can't actually bring these ships in and actually select them the feature isn't here in fall of the republic so we might be a bit limited in showing off the ships in these descriptions and of course i'm going to go over these a lot more quicker than the galactic republic ones because we have done this before in a home world mod showing off all the clone Wars ships if you want to see that video about the confederacy faction uh, i'll link a video in the top right uh, which is showing now uh, for you to guy go and watch it and get an even better detail of the confederacy ships and our first ship is the hard cell also known as the Techno Union ship. It's a titanium hull vessel and it is just over 220 meters in length. This model has turreted laser cannons, forward laser cannons, and in some models has missile launchers. Next up is the Diamond Cruiser. And this one actually got a model update in the 0.6 update and it actually looks fantastic. With the Diamond Cruiser, excuse me, it is a effective anti-fighter for the Confederacy and Commerce Guild. And whilst there's not much information on this ship, it first appeared in the 2002 Star Wars Saga film and Episode 2 Attack of the Clones. Next up, we have the Recusant Light Destroyer. And I have to say, I'm really impressed with this model as well. It looks absolutely fantastic. So the Recusant Light Destroyer was a long-range ship with very effective damage, but was also considered a glass cannon. Uh, General Grievous was often known to employ Recusant class star ships as his flagship, and were so commonly used that they were even used as late as the Battle of Coruscant by the Separatist Navy. Next up, we have the Munificent, which is also known as the Separatist Frigate. And uh, what I find interesting with this ship is that you also see some uh, green lineage alongside the blue that you see in a lot of the Confederacy ships here today to counter the, uh, the Galactic Republic's red. So that's quite an interesting note to take. I'm not sure if any other ships in the uh, Confederacy faction use this type of design as well. But, uh, it'd be interesting if they do. Next up, we have the Provenance, the carrier slash destroyer version, and not to be confused with the Dreadnought version, which is infinitely larger. This one comes in at 1,088 meters in length, has quad turbo lasers, heavy iron cannons, proton torpedoes, flat guns, tractor beam projectiles, and more. This ship honestly has it all. And uh, here you can see a very detailed uh, fighter bay here. Uh, where they sh the, the fighters would come out of a really really interesting take and some animated barriers here uh, which I find actually fascinating I don't think you see this in any other um, ships from the confederacy with a design like that that is a lot of attention to detail for sure next up we have the Luke Hulk which also comes in three variants this one being the battleship variant coming in at 3170 meters a primary capital ship for the trade confederation and most luca hulks were actually cargo haulers which were actually refitted for offensive use by the cis uh, the armament is mad uh, quad turbo lasers laser cannons point defense laser batteries tons of standard turbo lasers and more these were incredibly heavy hitters and alongside the battleship variant we also have two others which is also the battle carrier version and the auxiliary warship version each coming in with different stats different hard points and different uses within the mod we've also seeing some sort of different painting designs on the uh the luca hulks here to really identify which is which which i think is actually a really nice way to know which one you're dealing with in the galactic conquest uh, or even skirmish because i do believe all three of them are in skirmish as well and finally we have the subjugator a heavy cruiser variant with two mega iron cannons on either side of the ship that could completely disable other space units also a flagship for general grievous during the clone wars and comes in at 4845 meters in length and has tons of firepower heavy medium and light twin turbo lasers proton torpedoes tractor beam emitters and so much more so next up i thought we'd have a little bit of a fight here just to give you an example of uh, some of the gameplay in fall of the republic and uh, unfortunately we have these uh, carriers going straight in uh even though we haven't really started the match so that might be putting them at a little bit of a disadvantage we're going to be playing as the galactic republic here um so what i usually do is well first we start the match like so and then what we usually want to do is just grab all of our fighters uh that spawn from uh oops, sorry that spawn from our uh 
venators and acclimators and just generally grab them and throw them straight onto the ships that matter so they, they've got a bit of a stonk fleet here especially with the uh, provinces they have so what we really would want to do is uh swing by with all the fighters but since uh, and i'm not even going to worry about uh having the fighters focus on these carriers i've just gone into the front line just purely because our invincible acclimators and venators are going to handle that themselves i think one of the things that um the galactic republic might struggle with the most is anti-fighter capabilities um although i haven't properly played um fall of the republic on a galactic conquest level i think uh the confederacy has some really good utility such as the diamond cruiser to really take out um enemy fighters especially when uh one of the best things to do i feel uh with uh, the galactic republic is to swing by all the fighters into their front line to do, do chip damage to ships that matter the most and then have the invincible and the venators and the acclimators to do the most of the damage from there um, and then also have our heavy dreadnoughts just firing in from the sides uh, away from all the potential damage so here we can see our fighters just nibbling away at the uh, the shields of this uh, munificent and hopefully if we can just take out the, those engines as well um, and of course if we lose any of our fighters um, our venators and acclimators can go ahead and replenish them however this is not infinite they do run out of squadrons in eventually and you can tell this by when you're hovering over you can see the squadrons that they generate and i think the total amount of squadrons after they've been depleted um, although i don't know if that's completely true i don't that might be for something else uh, apologies if that is wrong but i'm assuming that's what that's for uh, let's also bring these new ones that have just come back all the way over to uh, the Munificent. And you can see here, a lot of these fighters definitely chipping away at our uh, uh, Invincible as well, which is headlining the uh, the attack here, protecting the, all the uh, acclimators in the distance, uh, as well as some of the Venators having a go at some of the provinces that are now coming into view. The uh, One thing I'm not worried about is the Recusant Light Destroyers. They may do quite a bit of damage, but they're incredibly weak uh for how big the ship is the the hull is uh, certainly not that impressive as well as the shield compared to other ships of a smaller size so for our heavy dreadnoughts here we're actually using the standard version there is a uh, pdf version that is missing uh, uh they have the same hull and shields but just simply missing concussion missiles just purely because they're an older build off the uh, the heavy dreadnought so there goes our munificent thanks to our fighters we're going to just try and have these fighters focus on the recusant light destroyer that's trying to get away after our invincible uh just shredded it down into nothing uh we do have our invincible losing its shields now tanking way too much from the provinces in the front line i'm going to see if we can get this uh venator to help out the one closest to it as well as this Venator here as well. These Acclimators might want to start coming in and focusing on this Provenance. Um, especially when you can use actives, uh, active abilities like boost weapon power. Which is super effective for uh, fights like these. So we're just going to go ahead and focus it all on that Provenance. And then this Invincible and Venator focus on the other. So now would be a good time to active activate the boost weapon power. You can see it's trying to get away so we're going to just focus down on its engines to prevent it from going anywhere and our fighters can go ahead and totally finish that light destroyer before it starts regening too much shields i don't want them to come back in with full shields again and that would be a bit of a harassment there we have lost our heavy dreadnought and our venator and uh, we're about to lose our uh invincible so our front line is now down it is now up to our um acclimators fighters and venator to do the rest i'm gonna go ahead and quickly focus in on this munificent take out his engines just to uh get it out of the playing field hopefully these fighters can just finish off the rest of this recusant light destroyer and then we can bring these fighters back to take out the 
Uh, Provenance, that is trying to get away. We are starting to run out of uh, fighters here. Uh, as we can see that uh, the acclimators are no longer regenerating fighters. And we have lost one Venator already, which is a major carrier for us. Uh, and if we can highlight here, we can see as five squadrons out of ten. So lots, lots and lots of uh, squadrons it can um, uh, shoot out at once. And with one down, it can cause a bit of a headache for us for fighter control. So that provenance is definitely going to get away. Our fighters are not going to be able to take it on anymore. Um, I feel like I gave the enemy maybe too many provenances uh, to, ta to take out. Because these are definitely a headache for sure. And they definitely do a lot of damage. So highlighting here, it has 3,400 hull, 3,000 shields. Uh, does generate quite a lot of squadrons itself. Um, with five, four light quad turbo lasers, heavy iron cannon, um, two light iron cannons, uh, three light dual laser cannons, four light proton torpedoes. So yeah, really decked out shit for sure. So... I'm glad that finally we'll be able to get these uh, acclimates just to wipe that thing out. Um, moving on to the Munificent. We should be okay now. We should be all right. That I was a bit worried there, but, you know, these uh, acclimators are definitely proving to be uh, such a good multi multitask ship in terms of ship-to-ship -ship combat as well as fighter carrier loadout, much like the Venator. But I feel like... Um, I don't know what it is. Like acclimators just do such a great job. We are using the uh, uh, the acclimator one, which does have one more squadron uh, per regen, um, but in turn it loses out a little bit of firepower and also has um, a little bit uh, less, uh, a bit more in price, I believe. So we can see the three variants here. So the acclimator one carrier loadout. 2,200 hull, 1,800 shields, two light quad turbo lasers, two light laser cannons, two proton torpedoes, and uh, and then, of course, four squadrons out of an eight total. Um, and then if we go to the carrier, uh, assault loadout, sorry, uh, it has more shields, but the same hull, uh, and it has, does it say it's the same squadrons here? That's different in, in Galactic Conquest. Um, there is one squadron less. I believe in Skirmish, it's exactly the same. But uh, with the Acclimator Assault loadout, you do get two Assault concussion, concussion Missiles, which the Acclimator 1 does not. Don't really go for the Acclimator 2, just purely because the shields are lower, the hull is lower, um, and um, squadrons don't have much in terms of regen, and it only has four light quad turbo lasers. So definitely a massive downgrade in my opinion. But uh, here we're going to go into the final stretches of the match. Our acclimators coming in to finish off what they started. And uh, yeah, really impressed with these models, you know. Like, uh, I think what really te like tears it apart from a lot of other Empire War mods is just the, the quality of textures that are being used um, alongside the, uh, the paint design as well. I feel like it really makes it unique. And I know it's following a lot with like what they, the, the, uh, the movies did, but it's just a, from a clarity standpoint, it makes it really, really, really easy to identify ships much faster than you would in any other Empire War mod. But yeah, again, the models that and the models and textures just look fantastic, you know. And the battle cam showing us more fighters. Of course it does. But um, there we go. Zooming in on that. And uh, I think there's just one Munificent left and we are good to go. Seems like this uh, heavy Dreadnought ended up taking <laughs> no damage at all. This one got away very luckily. Didn't use the uh, active um, boost weapon power either. But yeah, I think the fighters were de uh, on the enemy side were definitely a bit of a headache for us. Just purely because we didn't have anything in our fleet to properly counter the, uh, the fighters. The enemies did have a diamond cruiser which did harass our fighters when we were coming in for the... Uh, the Munificent at the beginning of the match, but uh, we got the job done either way, and just the fighters remain, which the acclimators will take out. But there, there you go, guys. I hope that you enjoyed a video like this. This was a, a brief yet somewhat detailed overlook on the Fall of the Republic mod. If you want me to do this for other Empire War mods, such as Thrawn's Revenge or Raking the Rebellion, let me know in the comments down below. 
And of course, don't forget our question of the day, which I'll list right here as well. Uh, and of course, guys, if you uh, love all things Star Wars, Empire War, um, even Homeworld, or even other games like Sea of Thieves or Mario Kart, definitely hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Definitely it goes a long way to help the channel grow. But uh, on a final word, I have been Charlie. You've been watching X2, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.